Harrington hoists are powerful machines designed to help you get the job done effectively and safely. And that's what this video is all about. Because the more you know about proper hoist operation, the safer you can work with heavy loads. Using a hoist isn't just putting a load on a hook and pushing a few buttons. In fact, there's a lot of information you have to know before ever beginning to work with hoist equipment. Keep in mind that no matter when you transport a heavy load, danger is always a factor. The risk is even greater with poorly operated or poorly maintained equipment. Harrington wants you to understand the special safety precautions that apply to the inspection, operation, and maintenance of hoists. Let's take a close look at important guidelines you should know before working with a hoist. Our number one priority is being certain that you know how to work with a hoist safely and effectively. First, some important warnings. Never use a hoist to lift, support, or transport people. Never lift or transport loads over or near people. Never work near or under suspended loads. Also, never lift a load that weighs more than the rated capacity of the hoist. And here's what you should always do. Always make sure that the supporting structures and rigging attachments are strong enough to hold the weight of the load and hoist. Always tell people near your work area when a lift is about to begin. Finally, always read the owner's manual and strictly follow all safety instructions. This is vital for your own well-being as well as every one of your co-workers. Remember, it's the owner's responsibility to make sure every operator reads the owner's manual before operating the hoist. And it's the operator's responsibility to follow the instructions to ensure the safety of themselves and those nearby. One more thing. Be sure to check all applicable safety codes, regulations, and other pertinent laws for additional information about the proper use of all lifting equipment. Let's talk about pre-operational inspection procedures for the operator of a hoist. Although a hoist may appear to be in good condition, check it every day using the manufacturer's specs for recommended daily inspection. And if you discover that any hoist is damaged or works improperly, do not use it. Instead, tag the hoist so it's put out of service until repairs can be made. Before you start any lifting procedure, check that the hook latches are working properly. If they're not, tag out and do not use the hoist until missing or broken latches are replaced. Inspect each hook. Look for any kind of irregularities, such as twists or wear. Make sure the load is seated in the saddle of the hook. Do not support the load on the tip of the hook, unless the hook is specially designed for tip loading. Also, avoid all side loading of a hook. As for load chains, always make sure they're in good condition. Worn or damaged chains must be replaced and destroyed. Never splice a hoist load chain, or use a hoist chain as a sling, or use one that's twisted, damaged, or stretched. Don't ever run the chain over a sharp edge, or use the chain as a welding electrode. Anytime you notice chain jumping, excessive noise, jamming, overloading, or binding of the chain, seek assistance and do not use that hoist until the chain is replaced and the problem is fully corrected. Now we're ready to start operation. The only people who may operate a hoist must be fully qualified in its operation. Before starting a job, Verify that the hoist you'll be using has a rated capacity sufficient for the load being lifted. Be certain that the chain is long enough for the job. Before any lift starts, make sure everyone is clear of the load. 
That includes you and people who work with or near you. Don't allow the load to come in contact with the chain or force a chain or hook into place by any method. Don't ever jerk a load or cause sudden shock loading. Never leave a suspended load unattended for an extended time. Never use a hoist with a capsized or inverted bottom block. This can occur on hoists with multiple chain falls. Don't let the hook or chain stopper link touch the hoist body. Now we'll take a look at some regular inspection and maintenance practices. Proper hoist operation and maintenance go hand in hand, so remember these important factors. Before any maintenance is done, always attach a warning tag to the equipment. Set up and maintain a regular hoist inspection schedule and be sure to keep accurate records that strictly follow the requirements of ASME B30.16. The only people who should perform maintenance procedures are qualified service personnel. Remember that maintenance must always be done while a hoist is not supporting a load. Always follow the manufacturer's specifications when applying lubrication to the gears and the load chain. Of course, always replace worn or damaged parts only with the ones recommended by the manufacturer. After any maintenance procedure where parts have been replaced or where repairs have been made, test the hoist in accordance with ASME requirements. Of course, the first step in proper maintenance is making regular equipment inspections. It's your responsibility to inspect the hook latches. Make sure the openings of the hooks are not too wide and the hook rotates freely. Also, to ensure safety, measure the hook's opening based on the manufacturer's specifications. If the opening is too wide, replace the hook. Look for any kind of irregularity, such as a twisted or worn hook. Replace the hook if you see any damage, such as gouges, nicks, or weld splatter. The hook should rotate freely. Then inspect the hook yokes for wear or loose or missing nuts, bolts, or rivets. The nameplate showing the hoist capacity must be attached and clearly legible. Warning labels must also be attached and easy to read. Securely tighten any loose nuts and replace all missing nuts and split pins. The idle sheave needs to rotate smoothly as well. If it doesn't, replace it. To check the load chain, use calipers to measure chain links per manufacturer's specifications. If specs are exceeded on any dimension, replace the entire chain. Replace the chain if twisted, cracked, nicked, dented, or gouged. Likewise, look for and replace heavily rusted or corroded chains. It's important that the chain welds face away from the load sheave area when new chain is installed. Be sure to look for any deformation, wear, or rust in the chain pins and top pins. Measure per manufacturer's specifications. Always replace pins that are worn or damaged. Inspect the brake components for any damage or wear and replace if needed. The load sheave must be carefully inspected as well. Pay special attention to signs of excessive wear or deformity and replace if necessary. And if replacing the load chain, always check the load sheave for corresponding wear. Make sure the chain stopper link is in place. Look for any wear or damage and replace if needed. Whether manual or powered, hoists offer plenty of advantages. So always play it safe by keeping these guidelines in mind. Now you have heard the general guidelines for hoist inspection, operation, and maintenance. But don't leave yet there are some additional hoist-specific safety guidelines you need to know. For a manually operated lever hoist, do the inspection without a load. First, set the changeover mechanism to the up position and operate the lever. 
you'll know that the brake is working properly when you hear a clicking sound from the brake pawl as the chain winds. Again, without a load attached, set the unit in neutral so that the load chain can move freely. Hold the chain with both hands and move it back and forth like this. It should move smoothly. If the hoist is equipped with a lever handle grip, be sure the grip is tightly attached. Carefully inspect the handle for any sign of cracks or other deformation. To ensure proper operation, check that the load hook travels up when the lever hoist is set in the up position and travels down when in the down position. In neutral position, the load chain should move freely in both directions. During operation, it is important that you never use a cheater bar or apply unusual force to the handle. For manual hand chain hoists, look carefully for wear and deformation of the hand chain and hand wheel. If either shows significant wear or damage, replace it. Remember, do not lubricate the hand chain. To operate a manual hand chain hoist, first make sure that you face the hand chain side of the hoist. One final note, it's extremely dangerous to attach a motor to a manual hoist. Now let's review some additional things you'll need to know to inspect, operate and maintain electric chain hoists. Before you do any mechanical or electrical inspections or maintenance on the equipment, always disconnect the main switch that supplies power to the hoist. You must also lock and tag the main switch. Lockout tagout procedures are set by ANSI and OSHA or customized by individual facilities. Refer to your written procedure for guidelines to follow. For everyone's protection, only trained, competent personnel should inspect and repair an electrically powered chain hoist. The first inspection step is to pull down on the pendant to make sure that the cord strain relief cable takes the force, not the pendant cord. If not, repair or replace it. Make sure the pendant cord is the correct length. If too long, do not shorten by tying or bunching the cord. Next, check that the pendant up button raises the hoist and the down button lowers it. Never overlook this step because reversed controls could result in serious injury or even death. If the hoist is not operating correctly, tag out the hoist. Visually inspect the hoist to make sure all adjustments are made properly. Listen for any unusual sounds that might indicate a problem. Check that the limit switch stops the hoist on command. The operator should also do this check at the beginning of each shift. The control lever should move freely. It should be replaced if it's bent or significantly worn. Another vital inspection is the operation of the braking system. With rated capacity, the braking distance should not exceed the manufacturer's recommendations. Carefully inspect the motor brake and measure it according to manufacturer's specifications. Contactor contact should be free of significant pitting or deterioration. Replace the contactors if they're worn. And if equipped with a cushion rubber, inspect for wear and replace if needed. If your hoist has chain springs, they must be in their original shape and not compressed. Let's focus now on inspecting the pendant. Push buttons should be interlocked, either mechanically or electrically, to prevent energizing both up and down motions at the same time. Repair or replace any faulty parts. The next things to check are the push button connections. All of them must properly make and break contacts. Carefully look over the pendant housing. It should be free of cracks, and the seals between parts must have no gaps. Tighten all wire connections securely and repair or replace any damaged wires. The pendant cord must perform at 100% electrical continuity, even when the cord is flexed back and forth, 
Again, the strain relief cable should absorb all the load forces to the pendant to help maintain the integrity of the wires and their insulation. Likewise, check the pendant cord surface for any nicks, gouges, or abrasions, and replace the cord if necessary. As you prepare to operate the hoist, make sure of two things. First, that the hoist will operate in its full range of motion without interference, and the person operating the hoist is well trained in proper rigging procedures for attaching loads to the hook. Operating an electric hoist safely involves far more than merely pushing the control buttons. Be aware that according to the ASME B30 standards, using an overhead hoist is subject to certain hazards that cannot be avoided or reduced in severity by engineered features. It is vital that you employ intelligence, care, common sense, and experience to anticipate all possible outcomes of activating the hoist controls. It's just as critical that you follow every warning, caution, or notice in this video, in the equipment manual, and other warning labels to guide your operation of an overhead hoist. Additional important points for safe hoist operation are Maintain a firm footing or be otherwise secured when operating a hoist. Be certain the load is centered under the hoist, is free to move, and will not encounter any obstruction as it travels. Also, the hook must travel in the same direction as indicated on the pendant control. Keep in mind that the hoist load limiting or warning device is never used to measure a load nor should the limit switches be used as routine operating stops. Limit switches are emergency devices only. As you might expect, the up button raises the hoist, the down button lowers it. Stop the hoist's motion by simply releasing the button. One last operating reminder. Let the motor stop completely before you reverse direction. This will increase smooth operation and extend the life of the hoist. Regarding maintenance, check the lubrication level in the gearbox and follow manufacturer specifications to fill or replace the oil. Examine the motor brake at regular intervals as specified by the manufacturer. Doing this will help keep your hoist in top working condition and prevent possible downtime. For optimum performance of an outdoor hoist, follow the recommended procedures of the manufacturer. With air-powered hoists, be aware that hazardous air pressure is constantly present in the hoist, in the compressed air supply to the hoist, and in the connections between the components. Good air quality will ensure proper hoist operation and help prevent damage to the unit. That's why air must be clean and free of debris, like dirt and rust. So before you operate an air-powered hoist, keep these important factors in mind, for your safety and the safety of those around you. The primary lubrication source is the oil that's mixed into the air supply. A dedicated air supply lubricator must be used with an air-powered hoist, or the hoist will not work properly. Verify that the air supply system has ample capacity to supply your air hoist with the required pressure and flow. The air supply must also contain no moisture or water. All piping, hoses, and fittings must be the correct size. To make sure they are, refer to the manufacturer's specifications. Both the filter and lubricator should be maintained according to manufacturer guidelines as well. An air-powered hoist will only run well with properly regulated air supply, so a regulator must be used. Trolley hoists offer added versatility, yet also present additional safety factors to the operator and work crew. Trolleys, beams, and hoists must all work together. For that to happen, remember, never attach a hoist that has a rated capacity higher than the maximum capacity of the trolley, the beam, and the supporting structure. The trolley must be properly adjusted to fit the beam size. Only use the hoist load chain to support a load. The hand chain is not designed for that purpose. 
Trolley hoists are not chairlifts, so never use them to transport people. It's extremely dangerous. Remember these important warnings as well. Proper suspenders must be used to couple hoists and trolleys together. If you notice any excessive noise, jamming, overloading, or binding of the hand chain, or if the trolley itself is damaged or malfunctioning, do not operate the trolley. Also, never let a trolley collide with another trolley or a trolley beam stop. This can cause the load to become unstable, not to mention damage to the trolley, hoist, and beam. For maximum control and safety, always keep the load centered under the trolley. Regular lubrication may not seem like a safety issue, but it is. Therefore, always follow the lubrication specifications of the manufacturer. Before you operate the trolley, make sure all shaft stopper pins are in place and secure. Slant loading or side pulling of the trolley and hoist is dangerous, so avoid doing it. Inspect all trolley parts daily for any deformation or damage and have any damaged or deformed parts replaced before operation. Also have any worn track wheels, bearings and hand wheels replaced. Now let's briefly review safety measures for motorized trolleys. The power supply cable must be the proper length for safe trolley travel. Just as with raising and lowering the hoist, your goal for guiding the trolley's travel is smooth operation. Press and hold the forward or reverse button to move the trolley in the desired direction. Stop its motion by simply releasing the button. When you release the pendant button, the trolley should come to a smooth stop within 10% of its traveling speed. This is why it's important to regularly check the trolley's braking system for safe operation. Working with heavy equipment takes knowledge, skill, and common sense. Remember, it's not just you that you're keeping safe. It's your co-workers around you and others operating the same equipment. These valuable tips and information should be practiced every day so you can get the job done safely and effectively. Harrington Hoists, working harder for you.